light. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 As you go to your seats and just get a little comfortable because I feel like we're going to have some church today. I need you to pray with me and think with me from this sermon. What did it kill me made me stronger. What didn't kill me made me stronger. Would you, would, you, would you please just turn to your neighbor, the uppity one. I need you to get all in their face and say, neighbor, what didn't kill me made me stronger. Amen. Amen. While, while I was matriculating through college, I worked as a CNA in a cycle. It, it, it was a great job, and I met some amazing people, both co-workers and patients. One patient, I recall, came in, and we clicked right away. She, she came in unashamed about her relationship with the Lord. She, she would call out what wasn't right. She would spot out the unfairness and favoritism on the unit. She was my favorite patient. We talked about the Lord, and she told me all that she had been through over her many years of her life. I, I, I heard of her journey as a believer and how God alone has brought her from a mighty long way. I, I felt like every time that I stepped on the unit, it was a testimony service. And she will always tell me, Mr. Mike, and I say, yes, ma'am. She'd say, what didn't kill me made me stronger. I, I, I believed it back then and I believe it even more now because as I watch her on the unit go through her many mental states she will always find herself reminding herself of who she was in Christ she will say and I quote I am saved sanctified Holy Ghost filled fire baptized running for my life with nothing but Jesus on my mind I, I, I love to hear it even though I know those were the words that she used when she was most distraught. She would say, and I quote, I am saved. I am sanctified. I am Holy Ghost filled. I am fire baptized. I am running for my life with nothing but Jesus on my mind. See, that, that's that saved talk that we need to adopt. When times get tough, don't count to one backwards from ten. Just recite this. I am saved. I am sanctified. I am Holy Ghost filled. I am fire baptized. I am running for my life with nothing but Jesus on my mind. Listen, when, when, when they try you at your job and you want to clap back, no, you can't clap back because you're saved. <laughs> you're sanctified. You are Holy Ghost filled. You are fire baptized. You are running for your life with nothing but Jesus on your mind. Listen, when that person cut you off on the way to church this morning, when, when you got that text that ain't sit right in your spirit, when your boss, they tried you out there, everyone else in the office, when them so-and-so tried to target you, listen, you have to remind yourself, I am saved. I am sanctified. I am Holy Ghost filled. I am fire baptized. I am running for my life with nothing but Jesus on my mind. Listen, I wish I wish I could tell you, child of God, that you are safe. But when you decide to follow Christ, and I mean really follow Christ, the enemy, he is out for blood. And you have to remind yourself, listen, I am saved. I am sanctified. I am Holy Ghost filled. I am baptized in the fire. I am running for my life with nothing but Jesus on my mind. When that enemy, when he comes, he's not playing no games. He'll do whatever it is necessary to break you. We, we are we are warned. We are warned in the scriptures. The Bible says that the enemy, that he comes not but only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Listen, he'll steal your joy. He'll kill your present and he'll destroy your chance for a future. But God says the enemy, he doesn't have that power when you are covered in Christ Jesus. So here we are this morning. We are eavesdropping in on the conversation between Jesus and one of the Pharisees by the name of Nicodemus. Uh, Nicodemus, he wants to know, how can I overcome the ultimate scheme of the enemy? How, how can I look the adversary in the face and know that there is still hope? For a future. Well, verse 14, it reads, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, 
Even so must the Son of Man be lifted. Here is why. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Here it is. You have to get this from that scripture. The reversal of your current situation is tied to the reverence of your Christ. Uh, you, you, you don't understand it yet, but the reversal of your current situation, it is tied to the reverence of your Christ. The scripture, it reminds us of the account found in Numbers when the people were suffering God's punishment for their sin. But the elevation of a bronze serpent on a pole provided relief and life for all who looked at it. And likewise, Christ, he is lifted up for the life of all who look to him in faith. I know that sounds like a bunch of jargon, so here it is. If I can sum all that up with one word, it will be grace. This, 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 is a, this is a clear act of God's grace. Listen, God, he sees your suffering. He sees you struggling. He sees your tears. He, he can hear your cry, but child of God, he wants to know, do you see him. Yeah. And here's what happened. The Israelites, they, they suffer a consequence because of their sin. They, they have sinned, so God, he released serpents to bite them, and some of the Israelites, they fell to death. So here they are, they made they went their way to Moses and told Moses, Moses, I need you to pray for us. I need you to pray on behalf of the Israelites. And Moses, he goes to pray to the Lord, and the Lord told Moses, make a fiery serpent and put it on a pole. And everyone who got bit by the serpent shall live when they look up to the bronze yeah. serpent. Yeah. And child of God, we were doomed for hell because we are the ones who committed the sin. And we really deserve to die the sinner's death. But God, he heard the cries of his people and he decided to raise his son up on the cross so everyone who looked up at him escaped the death. I don't know who this is for, but your, your head been down long enough. You've been moping long enough. Your situation had you down long enough. But God, he is trying to give you a new life through Christ Jesus. He's trying to pour out his grace on you through the sacrifice of his son. You have to pick your head up and fix your eyes on the cross. Because here it is, on that cross, all your sins are washed away. So lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, each and every last and door. And the Bible says that the King of glory shall come in. Well, who is this King of glory? He is the Lord, strong and mighty. He is the Lord that is mighty in battle. Whatever have you down, I promise if you look up to the hills from which coming your help, I promise all the help that you need will come from the Lord. And when you do, when you do, when you look up to Christ on that beautiful, rugged, bloody, nasty cross, a reversal will take place. Yeah, yeah. When, 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 we, when we learn to fix our eyes on Jesus, nothing remains what it was because Jesus made everything new. Listen, when we learn to fix our eyes on Jesus, nothing remains what it was, but everything is reversed. Can I tell to you, what was a bad day can become a good day. What, what was chaotic is now calm. What, what was down at one point is now up. What was dark is now light. What was dead Oh, 
perish. He says, you won't die. You won't get killed. It won't take you out. But here's my favorite part. And here's the gift. You will have eternal life. You will have eternal life. I like that scholars call this uh, life. He said that this is the promised rest. Now, when, when, when we reverence God, uh, there's a reversal. But God doesn't just reverse it. And this is my favorite. Uh, this is my favorite. God, he doesn't just reverse it. But God, he covers it. Mm -hmm. See? But, but God, he doesn't reverse it. Uh, uh, you have to understand, I've messed up sometimes. Yeah. Okay, just make sure y'all can't be funny. All right. Uh, God, he will reverse it. But the scriptures say that God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him just might be saved. Yeah. So God, he don't just cause a reversal, but he does not hold what you did against you. Right. I know that don't sit right with perfect people, but here it is. My writers, you, you get it. Uh, not only will he reverse it, but he won't hold what it is against you. Verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I know we've been to Sunday school, you know, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. This verse, it lets us know two reasons that Jesus came. He came, one, to shine light on who God is and to shine light on who we are not. Okay? According to John, one of the purposes of Jesus coming is to make God known to man. No, no one has ever seen God. So the Son came to make God known. And when you dive deep into who Jesus is, you likewise get a better understanding of who God is. And when we understand who we are not, we likewise understand the need for the God who Jesus came to shed light on. So St. Paul, this one, Jesus came to shine light on who we are not. Can I make it plain? Can I make it plain? I feel like I've been talking. Can I make it plain? Uh, Jesus came because we cannot make it to heaven because we look good. Yeah, we, we, we won't get through the gates because we have the newest rise or the best credit score. But the Bible tells us on our best days, we are as filthy rags. On our best days, we still sin. On our best days, we fall short of the glory. On our best days, we still disappoint God. So Jesus came to shed light on our sins, not to condemn us, but to correct us. There's, there's, a story, there's a story in the Bible right there in John chapter 8 where he is teaching in the temple. And the Pharisees, they brought a woman who was caught in the act of adultery. The law said to stone her. The, cho the church folk said, stone her. Okay, you catch it. <laughs> the law said to stone her. The church folks, the Pharisees, the people that knew the law, the teachers of the law, they said to stone her. But if we served a condemning God, we would have been out at our first sin. And if God was just about judgment, we would have been gone. But we find out in this story that God is not just about judgment. He's more so about development. Here it is. The young lady, she is brought, she is caught in the act of adultery. There's no question about it. You did what you did. Now, they bring this young lady to Jesus. And they tell him what they caught her doing. And instead of condemning, instead of judging, Jesus takes this as an opportunity to not judge, to not condemn. But he says, I'm going to develop this young lady. Jesus said, let him who is without sin, let you throw the first. No. I, I, I like I like Jesus. When, 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 when Jesus was faced with this young lady and they told him what she was caught doing, they expected Jesus to say, stone her according to the law. But Jesus said, listen, this is not a case of law, but this is a matter of love. So instead Without sin, cast the first.
first stone. So here they are. One by one, they drop their stone and they begin to leave. When all, when all, when all left. And it was Jesus and the girl. Jesus didn't shame her or put her down, but Jesus simply said, Go, daughter, and sin no more. I, I, I know you may be wondering, preacher, how is that development? How is he telling her to go and sin no more, developing her? Well, it wasn't so much as the words than it was his actions. All right. Je Jesus' mindset is never to discourage, but it is to encourage you to walk this Christian life out completely. Look, look at your neighbor and say completely. He, he, he wants you to be able to move forward from your mistakes, knowing that every mistake has been wiped away clean. Because of his love. Listen, he, he, he says, listen, I want you to go and sin no more. He says, I want you to experience after this mistake the completeness of a life to me. He came so that we can experience the fullness of God. Yeah, yeah. Jesus came. Jesus came so that we can have life and to have life more abundantly. And if we are going to fully walk this thing out, we have to, here it is, change what he's covered. Yes. I know this is some of you guys, some of you weren't listening. Sometimes when God, when he finds you in the midst of a sin, God, he says, don't go back to do what you were doing, but I want you to change your behavior. Sometimes, sometimes the development is not in what God does, but it is, it's in what God doesn't do. Listen, he didn't condemn, he didn't judge, he said, I want you to change your, your behavior. Mm -hmm. The lady was caught in her wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. But he tells the lady, go and sin no more. He, he, he didn't expose her sin to the rest of the world. But he covered it from becoming a front page news story. Mm -hmm. How many times, St. Paul, mm -hmm. are we going to get away with our sin? Until we change our behavior. Mm -hmm. How many times are we going to continue to walk in sin and take God's grace, God's covering, God's favor for granted? Mm -hmm. we, we stay stuck in this same prayer. I know I prayed and you probably prayed it too. Lord, if you get me out of this, <laughs> Lord, I never do this again. We, we stay stuck saying that same prayer. And Jesus, every time, he, he picks us up and he says, go and sin no more. This, this lady life, it was on the line due to a sin that she had committed. But in Christ, she was given a new chance at life. Listen, maybe I need to take that back. This lady life was on the line due to a sin, here it is, that she could control. But in Christ. She was given a new chance at life. Okay, let me make it personal. Uh, my life was on the line due to a sin that I committed, that I could control. And Christ, he lifted me up and he said, listen, this is your new chance at life. See, the scripture, you have to read it, it opens a new world to those who are in Christ Jesus. The scripture, it tells us, therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And child of God, I just want you to know that in Christ you can have a new life. In Christ, you can experience His grace and His mercy. In Christ, you can experience His goodness and His kindness. In Christ, you can experience His love and His joy. In Christ, you can experience a peace in the times of trouble. In Christ, you can experience a love Thank you. 